Okay, setting rosettes on a continental clip. First, I hold the tail up into place and I locate the front edge of the tailbone. This girl has a lovely, lovely tail set. And I set the rosettes pretty much in line to start with, with the front edge of that tailbone. Pretty much every time I do the rosettes, I pay attention to that, reset it so I can see. The other place I, thing I do is I stick my thumb right here underneath the dog and push out against their flank. You can see my finger poking out right there. It's roughly even with where I usually set the bottom of the rosette. So that's my next little point. I start off with a more like a square. That allows me to get a good look at what I need to do with them. I know that I want the jacket and rosette to have only a small amount of space between them, and I usually have the jacket about even with the back, with the flank. Now hers has a little bit, tiny bit more loose skin up in here, but it's it's a smidge. Now, as far as where it sits next to her rib cage, nope, her rib cage ends right here. So don't go by the rib cage. For the tail set to set your rosette and then put your rosette about a finger's width back from your jacket. So get your rosette set properly first. And then throw your clipper blades across the room because they'll only groom a dog once before they need sharpened again. Properly old, new blade, freshly washed and dried dog. See how long this lasts. The flank is an area that can be cut easy. I usually try to hold that still and go down against the hair. I'm very careful with it. I don't want to nick my poor dog. He doesn't deserve that. And since I know I want about a finger's width between the two, I'll go ahead and knock that in. And I go back towards the tail. Because it would leave me just a little bit more here to play with if I mess up. But as you can see, it's still more of a square than it is round. I don't like a lot of hair, hair taken from between the two rosettes. And that sits the rosettes farther down the side. And I think it just gives a very raw look to have all that open. So I like to keep them pretty close together. So I just do a little smidge between the two. I don't like to do anything in the groom it's going to artificially draw my eye to that one specific spot on the dog. So that's why I don't like anything set up really, really high that leaves a whole lot of raw skin here. Or really, really, really low with a whole lot of raw area looking here. You don't want a huge gap here for the same reason. That, and it just tends to make your dog look really long when you do things like that. <laughs> just put your tail out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Take the 
comb, brush everything straight back towards the tail. Flip off everything that falls past your scissor line. Or your shape line, excuse me. Straight down. Same thing. Now see, there's a little bit there that I didn't get with my clippers. That's okay. Did that on purpose to make sure I set it with my shears right first. And then I come back and clean that up with my clippers. And she actually grows so fast that I can't follow my old clipper lines. I have to pretty much reset her every time. So that's not quite even with the back of her tail set. So I'm gonna run them down this way to even that up better. There we go. Now it is. Now, obviously we also don't want them anywhere near this tall. Pretty sure I didn't scissor them when I did her last time. That was just three weeks ago. She grows too fast. I don't like to scissor this one even with the line because often if you've got a softer textured coat on a dog, that it gives the whole rosette this backward leaning appearance once you're finished. So I prefer to stand it up, come in, and snip with your blades even with the dog's body. Way easier said than that when you can't really see what you're doing. Let's see, turn another way, babe. Also, we'll come up and get this corner set right properly. I want that to be the lowest point, so that's what I'm going to aim for with my scissors. When I come the other way, put it in this direction. Clean up whatever falls past my line. I'm not gonna lie, this is the offside, and I always tend to have a slightly misshapen rosette on the offside because I can't see it as well. And you guys can't see because of my head. I'm telling you, it's hard to do all this and keep the camera out of you. It's pretty much it needs to be where my head needs to be. Then I'll just continue brushing it back down. Scissor in my round shape. Back up the side. Then stand it up and check the height. Check to see how curved it is. You get back down, Goober. Turn that one, babe. No, you don't need to see the camera. Turn your head. Or don't. Whatever, Glare. Whatever floats your boat, honey. Still so tall. Crazy tall.
pretend my mistakes are only because I'm being so awkward about the camera. Not because I'm not just not an especially good groomer. Letty, could we not wiggle, please? Well, it doesn't make it as much fun for me, Mom. You want to make sure when you're scissoring it that you don't come up around the back and go downhill. Because if you do that, see how that tends to make your whole dog's top line look like it's running downhill too? You also don't want to do it so that it looks like it's running down here, here, and taller up here. Because then even with a really nice tail set, your tail set starts to look kind of low. So you want to make sure you brush all that up, get a really good look at it. Oh, it's infuriating. Make sure it comes up around, even it's off, and goes back down. Still way too big. At least from this distance it is. But way too big or not, you get the basic idea of how I shape and get them put on there. And honestly, this is a big, 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 big girl. It's not necessarily too big a rosette for her. Once all this hair is sprayed up into top, into her. Eh, it still looks too big to me. <laughs> Maybe I'll do another one fixing the rosette, but for now that's that's where we're gonna stop. 